What's up guys, Omni here. Guys, no while it goes, another day, another video. Last night I tweeted I sleep. What recent news, topics, tweets, videos you want me to talk about tomorrow? Hey guys, today is Friday, December 9th, and uh, yeah, I didn't get much sleep last night because I stood up watching the Game Awards, which... <laughs> <laughs> if you were awake during that entire fiasco of that show, there were so many funny moments. Everything that happened there. Apparently, Bill Clinton won Game of the Year. I'm what I'm gonna do, and this is just the intro, but I'm gonna let you guys know, like a TLDR, you know, who won the biggest games that came out and the biggest highlights, but also other news that's going around as well. Because apparently, Markiplier might have an OnlyFans. I don't have to go into details like that. So you guys know the drill, okay? Sit back, relax, put your feet up, and yeah. Allow me to lay it on you. Hey guys, it's finally here. You heard me right. I said it. Markiplier nudes. Tasteful that they are. If you guys don't know, Markiplier has been hinting about the fact that he was going to release an OnlyFans. Well, now it is officially here. In fact, when he launched it yesterday, I think around during the Game Awards show, it crashed for like a whole like one hour. But now it's officially back up. And he came up with a video that said here dot dot dot. My OnlyFans is now available through the link in the description below. Oh, as man. promised, oh, the boy. deal is now complete <laughs> and the first of three drops of tasteful nudes is now available for purchase the proceeds of which will all be going to charity they'll be split evenly between the cincinnati children's hospital in my hometown of cincinnati and the world food program because if you're going to quench your thirst we might as well try to feed some people so <laughs> that's literally it and i know that none of you are even here anymore you've already clicked on that link so i'm still talking <laughs> sorry it was late uh, i wasn't able to Get in my office until just now for reasons that shall remain unknown because no one is listening to me anymore. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so guys, this is not a drill. The Markiplier nudes are here. He already has 21,000 likes on his OnlyFans and he's got a post right here and you guys can subscribe and you can get some tasteful nudes and all proceeds will be going to charity. So you guys might have to excuse me after this video because I'm going to have to donate to charity if, if you know what I mean. All right, guys, we got to talk about the Game Awards 2022, which was absolutely an event of all events. OK, a lot of things happened. I'm going to break it down into three categories. The nomination winners for the night. I'm going to also let you guys know all the big games I got announced for the night. And then also I'm going to go over all the highlights of the night. Some of the craziest things that happened, some of the funniest things that happened that everybody was talking about on the Internet, because that's everything that was trending last night all over Twitter and just the world. So game of the year, the award went to El. Elden Ring. It was a toss up between Elden Ring and God of War that entire night. God of War was winning every award that you can think of left and right. I think they won a total of seven awards. However, it dropped down and came to the big boy Elden Ring, which I'm okay with. Elden Ring did it absolutely huge. People thought there might have been some recency bias with God of War since it came out more recently. But when Elden Ring dropped, it, it was a big deal and it's going to continue to be a big deal for a very long time. So congratulations to Elden Ring. This is a good W. Best Game Direction went to Elden Ring as well. In terms of the best narrative, aka for outstanding storytelling and narrative development in the game, that also went to God of War. To note, by the way, Horizon Forbidden West got nominated for almost everything, too, in all of these categories and did not get a single W. So that's that's an L. That that sucks. <laughs> I feel like it just came out at a really bad time. You know, you got God of War versus Elden Ring. It's like Goku versus the the, the bad guy. And Vegeta is just like there, like, hey, what about me? Like, nah, nah, like, sorry, this is this is the end. We're, you don't count. You're only third place now. Best art direction went to Elden Ring as well. And this one was kind of sus. A lot of people were kind of upset about this, but the best score and music for outstanding music, inclusive of score, original song, yada yada, went to God of War. People were upset about this for two reasons. Number one, Sonic Front. Frontiers was not nominated because people believe the Sonic Frontiers OST was outstanding. But number two, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 was nominated for this one. And people were like, what the heck? Not even Xenoblade Chronicles 3 could win the OST award because I know that the OST for any Xenoblade Chronicles game goes absolutely ham but however they gave it to god of war last night was definitely a god of war ragnarok sweep despite not winning best game uh, of the year they won so many awards it was absolutely wild best audio design also went to god of war best performance okay <laughs> <laughs> went to God of War winner Christopher Judge. Okay, this guy right here is the voice of Kratos. He won the first award of the night and uh, my man came in here with the gold suit and everything. If you guys don't know Kratos from the game, he's not a man of many words. He just comes up there and he goes, ah, you know, oh, and boy, and that's it. And he's gone and he dips. However, <laughs> the voice actor himself, Christopher Judge came up here and literally stole eight whole minutes from the entire Game Awards talking joint. For some reason, somewhere down the way, this man decided to talk 
for eight minutes. In the beginning, I was kind of like, you know, hey, let him cook, okay? He, he came out here, he said he wanted to thank my mom. I was like, all right, you know, let him cook, let him go, let him go. This man started rambling, started talking about, like, I don't know. He just had that syndrome where he just would not shut up and stop talking. Like, all respect to Kratos and Christopher Judge, but he would not stop. <laughs> To the point where people were making jokes about the fact that Christopher Judge was up there basically to extend the, uh, the, 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 what is it called? The Steam Deck. They were giving Steam Decks every minute of the night. And even Jeff himself made a couple jokes about how Christopher Judge took up all the time in order to get more Steam Decks. So, yeah, this man came up there and just literally ate up, like, eight minutes. Therefore, everyone else who came up afterwards was like, like hey guys, I gotta go. And then they started playing the music, like, immediately. Because they were running out of time. And also, it was wild, like, but randomly Al Pacino was the one that gave this award like out of nowhere like <laughs> Al Pacino comes up there and he's like I I can barely even read the teleprompter you know like <laughs> and my man was struggling he was up there but he did it and he gave the award but everyone was just like what in the world why is he doing it I wasn't upset I was like this is pretty hype I love Al Pacino but like absolutely random games for impact award went to as dusk falls best ongoing game went to my boys final fantasy 14 they beat out beat out apex legends destiny 2 fortnite and Genshin Impact. They defeated the evil. Awarded to a game for outstanding development of ongoing content that evolves the player experience over time. Final Fantasy XIV, best gaming community, hands down. Okay, if you've never played that game or never joined the community, just stand up. Swell guys. Like, no toxicity. Everyone wants to help you play and win. And I remember last time I played Final Fantasy XIV, I was like, hey guys, I'm new. And then I got surrounded by like three random people who were like, who just gave me all this gear. And they're like, if you have any questions, let me know. I'll teach you what to do. Like, it's like people are literally sitting in Final Fantasy XIV world waiting for new players to just come in and just, just teach them how to play. <laughs> Best indie game went to Stray. I believe Stray took two awards for Outstanding Creative and Technical Achievement. Now, I was kind of sad because I wanted to go to Cult of Lamb, but I do know that Cult of Lamb had some of his weaknesses as well. They lost out to Tonic, Neon White, and Sifu as well, but Stray got Best Indie, which is well-deserved. I need to play this game sometime this year, hopefully. Best Mobile Game went to Marvel Snap, beating out Genshin Impact as well. The evil is defeated. Best Community Support went to Final Fantasy XIV, beating out Fortnite, No Man's Sky, Destiny 2, and Apex Legends. I, I love seeing Final Fantasy XIV win. That's that, that. The only reason why I don't play that game is because it would absorb my entire life. Innovation and accessibility, recognizing software and or hardware that's pushing the medium forward for adding features and technology and content to help games be played and enjoyed by an even wider audience went to God of War as well. I, I could have swore that some other game out there might have like been much more appealing to this, but apparently God of War took this one as well. I was, I was surprised when that happened. I was like, dang, they are taking everything. Thing. Best VR slash AR experience went to Moss Book 2, beating out Among Us VR. Action game went to Bayonetta 3. That's right. The voice actress of Bayonetta for Bayonetta 1 and 2, she lost. She tried to do a freaking huge um, boycott of the game, and instead they won Best Action Game, beating out Call of Duty, which I think Call of Duty was nominated for a lot of games as well and didn't win anything. Uh, Neon White, Sifu, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredders. Revenge. So yeah, congratulations to Bayonetta 3, another game that I need to play. And if you guys don't know, they actually announced Bayonetta Origins game that you can play as well. So it's Bayonetta as a kid that's gonna be coming out for the Switch sometime in I think March or April of next year. Best action adventure game went to God of War, beating out A Plague Tale Requiem. I think A Plague Tale, Tale Requiem was also one of those games that got nominated a lot as well, but never won anything, but beating out Stray and Tonic and Horizon Forbidden West. I feel bad for them because they look like they're really good games. They just came out at the wrong time, bro. And next year is going to be kind of similar. Like next year, it's going to be Zelda Breath of the Wild and Final Fantasy 16. And I don't know anything else I can't think of at the moment that's going to be like probably like up there in terms of like best game of the year. But if you make a game next year, you got to go against not Breath of the Wild, but Tears of a Kingdom, uh, Breath of the Wild 2, essentially. You got to go up against that. And that's, I mean, that's an L. Like there's no way. <laughs> You know, they're going to win everything. The best role-playing game went to Elden Ring, which was a surprise to me. I thought it would be Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Like, I thought, like, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is, like, the RPG, the role-playing game. And I, I was kind of confused. I was like, is Elden Ring even a role-playing? I think of role-playing, I think of, like, you know, being in a party, 
press the button you know kill and all that stuff but they beat out pokemon legends triangle strategy and live alive as well best fighting game went to multiverses which is interesting and they beat out sifu dnf duel jojo's bizarre adventure the king of fighters 15 i was surprised that guilty gear strive didn't get in coming here but i guess that's because it doesn't count as patches but yeah as wild though multiverses was huge at one point and now i think the game is basically like dead i don't think anybody's playing it anymore not that i can think of like it's one of those things where people were like yeah let's all go play and then like and it was just done like i don't <laughs> the long having the longevity for video games can be very very difficult and i don't know if multiverse has actually made that cut at least to my knowledge as of right now also why is batman holding a sandwich best family game went to kirby and the forgotten land beating out splatoon 3 and mario rabbit sparks of hope i'm not mad okay love me some kirby 30th anniversary for kirby i'm not mad i was hoping to see splatoon 3 win this because splatoon 3 is just well it's just a great game but i guess when you think of just family wise it would it makes more sense for it to be kirby it's just a great family game in general best sim and strategy game went to mario rabbit sparks of hope best sports game and racing game went to gran turismo 7 beating now uh fifa nba and uh f122 best multiplayer game went to splatoon 3 which i'm so happy for splatoon 3 is so good Beat out Call of Duty again, beat out Multiverses, beat out Overwatch, beat out Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge, which was, is a good game, by the way. But yes, Splatoon 3 won. Super happy that uh, my guys over in the Splatoon 3 community got a W. Wrapping up towards the end, okay, content of the creator of the year went to Ludwig, the, the man, the myth, the man, the legend himself, beating out Carl Jacobs, Nebelian, No Brew, and QT Cinderella. That one was kind of like a no-brainer. Like, Ludwig, in terms of just making content, just he just he can't. He can't stop. It's just constant, consistent content creation like he's, it, all he does is absolutely create huge w for you man always making muggle moves best debut indie went to stray which is pretty freaking cool that's their second one of the night best adaptation you guys already knew i was about that life arcane league of legends i still think arcane league of legends i think from what i understand arcane league of legends every award that they have ever been nominated for, from what I'm understanding, that they've ever been nominated for, they have won. I think they are just basically winning every single thing that comes under the category of them being in it. Uh, they went against like Cyberpunk, Edge Runner, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, the movie Uncharted, and the Cuphead show. But man, I need some more arcane in my life. I'm telling you, if you guys have not seen that, phew, Wait, you you oh you don't have to play League of Legends to watch it, but man, you missing out on some good good film and tv and animation wrapping up the most anticipated game for 2023 or in the future went to legend of zelda tears of the kingdom okay people have been waiting for the breath of the wild sequel for a really long time and they were like yes that is definitely the most highly anticipated game best esports game went to valorant which beat out league of legends and rocket league and csgo best esports athlete went to jacob yay white taker uh best esports team went to loud and uh best esports coach went to matthias bazooka and the best esports event went to the 22 league of legends world championship so yeah those are the winners of all the nominations for the game awards now let's move on to the let's talk about the games that came out the biggest games that uh the news that came out for the game so guys thanks to this kotaku article i have here a list of all the games that come out i'm only going to pick out the big chunky wongies i'm not going to do every single game announcement out there okay just the ones that i think are pretty big first one being among us getting a new hide and seek mode which looks absolutely pretty cool basically i've been looking for another reason to play among us and this looks like uh <laughs> it's one of those games that i just stopped playing because you know i just got other games to play but it's one of those games i would love to come back to hide and seek mode where basically you run away and you play hide and seek and you try not to die and i guess you're just trying to beat just the per one person the killer so it's another mode to bring the freshness of uh, among us back so yeah if you guys want to play some of that that will be available also street fighter 6 was on there and they announced some new characters and a release date the release date being sometime in june and in terms of the new characters i'll just show them to you right now Got my boy DJ, Manon, Marisa, who looks like One Punch KO, and then JP. So that's the squad. And it looks pretty dope. The game looks really good. I hope it's also equally as fun to play. I'm, I am I, I love Street Fighter games. Did not like Street Fighter 5, though. I'm hoping Street Fighter 6 is going to be a breath of fresh air. And again, if you guys don't know, there is an open beta for you guys. Part 2 in December right now. You have to apply and get into the lottery. I still have not applied. I need to do that really fast. But yeah. And guys, ladies and gentlemen, holy crap. A game 100% worth mentioning is Hades who i cannot wait i when i saw it i saw super giant games and i was like wait that sounds familiar and then i started seeing the art and then i was like oh my god hades 
Polly has a sequel called Hades 2 starring this girl. I don't know who she is. I think she's like the daughter of Zeus. And um, and yeah, I don't know who she's gonna be fighting, but it's just another Hades mode, okay? As you guys can see, it's already inspired from the previous Hades. You got Moros. It looks like similar. It's not like they tried to redo a formula that wasn't working. They took what already works and they made it new <laughs> and they made it different. You're getting more content in a different form. I'm super excited. I don't know if anything's gonna beat the whole, um, you know, version of having, is, is his name Zagreus? It's like Zagreus and then you had uh, the, the, the god of, I can't remember the story, but the voice actors it's all gonna be great okay i'm really excited for it uh i don't know if they came out with a release date though yeah no release date which means it's probably not coming out next year probably 2024 so woo, survive another game and i already mentioned this already but bayonetta origins cereza and the lost demon it's basically a game of baby <laughs> bayonetta and she's going around talking about how that she can um basically save her mother and uh, it's just an origin story of Bayonetta, which I thought was pretty cool because I feel like they can do that with a lot of video game characters like Dante from Devil May Must Cry. Like you can just take them and just turn them into a baby chibi form and then just play their, their kid's story origins as well. Destiny 2 Lightfall was a big announcement. I'm not a huge Destiny person, but I know that Destiny is a big game enough that I need to mention it and say that yes, you can play it and it looks absolutely brilliant. Another super really cool game that's coming out, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, which had Harley Quinn and had the shark from the Suicide Squad and they had Batman and apparently Apparently Batman, Kevin Conroy, the original voice of Batman from the old back in the old days, uh, Batman films who passed away will be voicing this character for the last time. So uh, yeah, man, the last time we get to hear Kevin Conroy's voice, rest in peace. And it's, it looks absolutely brilliant as well. They do my boy Flash real dirty on here. So <laughs> another game that everybody's super excited for is Star Wars Jedi Survivor, which I guess is like, you know, the last Jedi all over again. And you're just surviving against a world filled with the Sith. And yeah, a lot of Star Wars fans are back. Cal Kestis is back. He's got a beard. He's going to be chased by Jedi hunters. And yeah, if you guys are into that whole shebang bang, here it is. Now, this one is big news. Another game coming out called Earthblade, which if you guys don't know, is the same people who made Celeste. Celeste is a game that came out a while back, one of my favorite games to play in terms of platforms. Well, now they have their new platform. It's not coming out until 2024, but it's called Earthblade. And if you kind of look at it, it looks, you know, very similar to Celeste, just new designs and everything, except you play as like a unicorn or a ram or something like that. And instead of like dashing everywhere, now you have a sword. So in the previous game, I don't think you even had a weapon if I remember correctly. All you did was just try to move around in obstacles. But in this platform, it looks like you're running around and it's like a hack and slash, which is pretty interesting because I'm kind of scared because I thought the whole point of Celeste that made it so cool was like the movements of dashing up, down, left, right, all that stuff. I'm sure they'll be able to capture the same magic as well. So yeah, Earthblade, super excited to play this, but it's not coming until 2024. <laughs> then we have uh, Dune Awakening. So I, I just found this out you know, when I was talking to you guys last night, but apparently Dune was before Star Wars. I was looking at this and I was like, you know what, this guy, this looks like a inspiration. I was like, this looks like just desert Star Wars. And someone's like, uh, Omni, Dune has been around before Star Wars and in fact Star Wars was uh highly designed and 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 around the concept of Dune Awakening so yeah we get an actual survival MMO game of Dune which looks like it's going to be pretty cool as well no release date though another game that a lot of people were excited to see Death Stranding 2 now I didn't play the first one but it's from your boy Hideo Kojima okay I thought his name was Hideo Kojima but he called him Hideo Kojima but yes it's Death Stranding is that whole game with the weird baby right and now as there's a Death Stranding 2 sequel the baby is still there and they're just trying to protect the baby I don't know if the baby dies or shots I don't know what's going on with this thing I haven't played it but it's the Hideo Kojima so it's highly acclaimed and people are going to want to play it I guess I so so yeah ladies and gentlemen we got Tekken 8 and we got some battle scenes we got freaking Paul we have King we have well, somebody looks like Law we got Jen the, the combat looks absolutely this game looks absolutely gorgeous like oh my god like comparing Tekken 8 Street Fighter 6 it just looks so god dag on good and I'm really excited to play this game I, I might come back for it I haven't played Tekken in a while I don't know what's going on now I wish they just you know June the the mother of all of them I wish she just came back and just bodied everybody is there a version that's happened like that yet bring her back to life and she comes at and bodies everybody and then that should be that's her right there that's the girl that's my OG girl from Tekken Tag and Tekken 3. Another huge announcement guys Diablo 4 got 
announced. Now, I'm not about the Diablo 4 Life, but I know there's a lot of people about the Diablo 4 Life, and so this definitely had to be announced. Super bloody trailer where it looks like he was this some guy was fighting some chick named Zillif or something, the underworld. But yeah, if you guys like Diablo, Diablo 4 got announced. It looks absolutely pretty. I don't think we actually saw any gameplay, but I mean, Diablo was Diablo. It's the same gameplay, but a little bit better. Hordes of monsters fighting against each other and you hacking and slashing your way through. Horizon Forbidden West, Burning Shores. They came out with some DLC. Another game that I need to play and the only reason why I haven't played it, which looks brilliant, it got nominated for everything and won nothing, but I'm sure the game is absolutely amazing just for the fact that it's sitting there up there with the contenders of God of War and Elden Ring. Just one of those games that just came out at the wrong time. I believe this game came out a week before Elden Ring, literally just one week. So people were like trying to play this game, trying to play this game, and then boom, Elden Ring came out and everyone just started playing Elden Ring. I, I don't even know if it's successful or not in terms of like sales and stuff, but Jesus, like that was just not a good idea. Whoever had the timing on that, woo, uh-uh, uh-uh. Another game that people were excited for is Blue Protocol. Blue Protocol uh, basically is like Genshin Impact, but with black people. <laughs> Take Xenoblade Chronicles, right? Which is already kind of anime-ish. Now make it Genshin Impact type anime-ish. And now instead of everyone just being like light skin, now give them some darker colors and some shade and some ethnicity now and techno color. And you've got Blue Protocol. It's being made by Bandai Namco. And a lot of people are super excited for this action MMO. This one was pretty cool, but uh, Transformers Reactivate. It was a post-apocalyptic -ap 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 world where there's Armageddon and people were just trying to figure out how to survive. And uh, I called it first. I was the first person. Person stood up and I was like, who is this? What's going on? And I saw the yellow hands. I was like, B? Bumblebee? And yeah, man, we got main character Bumblebee out here about to save the world against the Decepticon. Also, what was pretty cool, the Super Mario Brothers movie, the first full scene. We had uh, Peel come out here and do some really, really corny skit about like a cap and the difference between a cap and a hat did not hit. It was really, really bad. So we just like, all right, shut up and show us the scene. And the scene looks so good. Now I gotta be careful here because the copyright strikes will come in, but there are so many little tidbits here in terms of the music, the audio, the, the background, the, the toads hitting their heads to get the coins, some of the items that they can get. The, the everything about here is a shout out to basically the game. And if you play Mario in the movies enough, you will be looking at the entire Thing. It'll be hard for you to not watch it. You have to rewatch it many, many times because you'll miss so many good Easter eggs that are just surrounding the entire thing. The game, it looks absolutely good. I cannot wa wait to watch this movie. Another game that I think is worth mentioning, Crime Boss Rock K City. The reason why I think this one's worth mentioning because it had all of these famous actors on there. I think it was like Donald Glover, uh, the Danny Trejo's up in here. Uh, Danny Trejo's always up in video game movies though. And uh, yeah, I mean, Danny Glover, I said Donald Glover and a whole bunch of other people. It looks like a first First person, uh, I want to say Grand Theft Auto, right? That's what it kind of reminds me of. Um, but yeah, if you guys, and Vanilla Ice is in here too, and Chuck Norris. Random as hell, I know, but yes. <laughs> Uh, a, a, a game based on a whole bunch of older actors that are out there that used to be super cool. Crime Boss uh, launching March 28th, 2023. Then we have an announcement, Cyberpunk 2077. We got DLC for it called Phantom Liberty. Keanu Reeves already making an appearance, but if you guys don't know, a new person, a new challenger has arrived. It is going to be Idris Alba. Where is the, where is the, uh, where is it? There he is. So first we had Keanu Reeves, and now we got your boy Idris Alba up in the game. Another game a lot of people are excited for is Armored Core 6, Fires of Rubicon. Now I'm just gonna be completely frank. I don't know much about Armored 6, Armored Core 6 or anything like this. I, I, I don't know what's going on. It looks like a mech type uh, game where you're a mech, but a lot of people really like this. There's a huge fan base for it. I just was out of pocket and I just didn't hear much about it. But you know, in case you guys are fans, just kind of let you know, Armored Core 6 is planned to come out. Then we got some more shows. We got Final Fantasy 16, which I believe we also got a release date as well as, it's either May or June, I forget which one this is either may or june we're getting breath of the wild may or june and then we're getting final fantasy 16 may or june those are going to be the two biggest games that i can think of for 2023 so far outside of resident evil full more than likely the game looks sexy it looks brilliant if you're a final fantasy fan you got to play it you made some guy and he, apparently you can just turn into e free whenever you want and it just looks gorgeous people die and and <laughs> you survive. Okay, those are the huge chunky wongy game announcements. Now let's go into the highlights, okay? And you know what, let's just go directly into it, okay? We have to talk about how Bill Clinton won. <laughs> 
<laughs> game of the freaking year. Okay, if you guys don't know, last night at the Game Awards when Elden Ring won their award, some kid basically snuck in with the group and camouflaged themselves Metal Gear Solid style with the back. And as everything was getting wrapped up, came up there and said special thanks to my homeboy Bill Clinton, the unorthodox rabbi. And everyone was like, what in the hell fat is going on? If you haven't seen the clip, I'll play it for you right now. Hey, Matan. You know, real quick, I want to thank everybody and say that I think I want to nominate this award to uh, my Reformed Orthodox Rabbi Bill Clinton. Thank you, everybody. All right. <laughs> Jeff fuming, doing great, good job right now, not hiding that that rage. But my man is fuming. Like this kid came out there and was like, he camouflaged his way. And let me show you the story of how it all happened. And there is actually lore around this kid as well. First of all, how did he get on stage? Well, my girl Glitch, she took this picture here and showed me and said, homie just walked up in there as they won the award. This dude right here literally just got up and was just like, I'm just gonna walk there and pretend I'm part of the crew. Like. <laughs> And he just got through. That was it. It was that easy. People were worried, like, if he had, like, ill intention, that could have been really bad. Like, obviously, yeah, I think. But the thing that here is that anybody could have gotten up and done exactly what he did. He just made it so smooth and seamless that he just blended in in the background, which is just absolutely just... He Metal Gear Solid it. Then, literally not even like a couple minutes after the Game Awards was over, Jeff went on Twitter and said, the individual who interrupted our Game of the Year moment has been arrested. Joan almost has 300,000 likes. It was immediate. And everybody's in the comments, bro, being like, what the heck? Bill Clinton won Game of the Year? What did he just say and why? I tweeted out, I was like, what is he planning? <laughs> And the memes here are so funny. As quickly as he came into our lives, he vanished. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Said Jeff was absolutely freaking pissed. And so I'm pretty sure this is the image that I'm going to have to put in the thumbnail. I can't believe there is a day where Bill Clinton has to be in a freaking thumbnail, an Omni thumbnail. But here we are. <laughs> completely stole the show in terms of the ending and everyone was talking about now i feel like this controversy is kind of like a net positive it's a meme that i think is just going to carry itself over and over again and i think it's going to give the game awards even more publicity outside of the people who are already watching because people are gonna be like why is bill clinton trending what is the game award so i think it's a net positive it sucks right though that it ruined the moment for elden ring like they got their award and it sucks that that kind of happened and i got allowed but i think net positive wise everything is going to be okay and everyone's just gonna have a lot of fun just basically bringing up the fact that bill clinton and elden ring now officially tie into the lore and my boy power cynical made this tweet game awards bill clinton kid lore someone had let him know he said my friend's friend just walked up stage at the game of the year awards and thanked his rabbit bill clinton rabbi bill clinton and if you guys see here it's a discord message this was right before it ended and said what is he doing that's literally him lmeo he's hiding he's going to shout out his rabbi when they're done bro i am dying of laughter he said what are you guys talking about how was he up there the game awards how has no one told him to get down <laughs> unreal i'm laughing so loud oh my gosh how's it going good he said f me he really did it lmao lmao oh my gosh i'm crying so this was premeditated and the, there's the receipts of people who before it actually happened saying like yo my friend's about to go up there and do this which like look if you actually are going to be a troll right and you successfully go up there you know you could have said anything right you could have just been up there and but like you know where's the smash right <laughs> like no smash <laughs> completely destroying the smash community and one swell swoop it could have been anything and my man was just like shout out to the rabbi freaking bill clinton but look apparently the lore goes even more deeper apparently and i'm going to read into this but this is the same kid that apparently appeared on info wars so now somehow this is tied back to alex jones and somehow this ties back someone said this ties back to anti-semitism and apparently this is all kanye's fault as well my guy nick diorio said it looks like the game awards bill clinton crasher was some squeaker kid they interviewed on info wars two years ago and this is him this is the first image made, made an even full interview with owen schroyer and then uh main even main matan even seems to be the person's name 
the kid who baited the Clippers and crashed the World of Warcraft panel. And uh, yeah, but because of this kid, Bill Clinton was trending with over 100,000 tweets last night. 100,000 people talking about Bill Clinton out of nowhere. Hassan being like, why was there a random French kid on stage that shouted out Reformed Orthodox Rabbi Bill Clinton? Uh, Hungrybox <laughs> talking about it as well. Okay, it's, let's go back to the flute player. He said, do not let the flute player guy be overshadowed by the Bill Clinton kid. So if you guys don't know, this flute player, right? Okay, this we'll, we'll, we'll dissect it to this, was a flute player who was playing at the Game Awards at the end of the show, right? They show this, you know, everyone playing the music for all the games for the Game of the Awards. And this flute dude had three different flutes. And my man was going crazy. He was like freaking the dude from uh, Ron Burgundy from Anchorman. Got the first flute, threw that flute away, grabbed another the flute that looked like something else and was just like kum, 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 kum. threw that flute away grabbed that flute and was just going to town i don't know who that flute dude is but i want to see him everywhere at all times speaking of crumbling we have to talk about sonic frontiers versus genshin impact this is probably the biggest chungiest wongies of the highlights outside of the bill clinton dude there was a player's choice award that we talked about in our last episode where babies people were bought and left and right for the player's choice award to get like the most voted player's choice game between Ancient impact and sonic frontiers you know it was an all-out war people were getting docked people were getting bought it there was racism everywhere there was a war on the internet everyone was going crazy and last night they announced the winner of it even jeff said there he was like we got rid of all the bots and all that stuff he knew exactly what was going down in terms of the war but unfortunately genshin impact lost and here's uh games cage fidel's uh response to it as well rest in peace i think he is currently dead but uh in case you missed it i'm gonna play his i'm gonna play mine as well because we were we were both freaking just blow uh -huh. This is it, please. This is it, guys. Once we took out all the bots, he took out the bot. Oh, the bot bot shit! Fuck! What the hell? He just evaporated and literally for like 20 seconds, gone. He he did not appear. He stayed out of the box for at least 20, 30, 40 seconds, guys. Rest in peace, the games game. What? Player's voice. Fan Here we go. Category. You Here guys we go. Very busy voting the past few days. Here we go. Tony, Sonic Frontiers, Genshin Impact, Elden Ring, God of War Ragnarok, and Stray. If, if it's Stray, Once we took out all the bot votes. The Game Award goes to Genshin Impact. Oh, no! <laughs> Here are the nominees for Best Independent Game: oh. Lamb, Neon White, Sifu, Stray. Ah. Tunic. But anyway, guys, that was the Game Awards TLDR in a nutshell 2022. Highly entertaining, way better than it was last year. And if it keeps improving like this, it's going to just keep getting more and more successful. Shout out to boy Jeff. Shout out to Bill Clinton, my rabbi, the reformed rabbi. <laughs> Shout out to Animal. Shout out to the voice of Kratos taking 10 minutes of the voice. Shout out to all the new games coming out. Let me know what you guys thought about the Game Awards. What was your favorite night? What was your favorite moment? What did you think about the memes as well? But actually, that's it. That's all we got to talk about today. Okay, it's a Friday. Go enjoy yourselves. I ain't talking about nothing. There's probably some other stuff as well, but I'll catch you this weekend. If not this weekend, I'll catch you on Monday as well. Okay, I love y'all. I'll see y'all later. I need some sleep because I like I went to sleep late and then I woke up this morning and now I'm edited and all this stuff. And I need some sleep, so I'm just get this out the way so that I can rest this weekend and probably make some more content. So I love y'all. Take it easy. Have a good one. Shout out to my boy Bill Clinton. Peace.